Hello, good morning, and welcome to this week's serving of Mickey Waffles, a Disney podcast where we cover everything from parks, movies, and merchandise. My name is Sinead. My name's Kate. Hi, guys. How's it going? I'm good, KP. How are you? I'm pretty good. Do you know what today is, Sinead? Today's Tuesday. It's actually Tuesday, not like last week when it was Tuesday. And you know what that means. <laughs> it's Special Guest Tuesday. Woo! <laughs> and this week we are joined by the lovely Craig. I wouldn't say lovely. Yeah, uh, neither would I. Whoa! <laughs> the dragon hate already. Oh, we're starting out strong. Uh, Ryan at least got eased into it. That's it. That's it for the evening. I'm done. <laughs> I'll get me half. <laughs> so how are you, Craig? I'm fabulous, you know. Um, I've had a strange little day all to myself. Well, I thought it was, and then... Um, my youngest star Grace got sent home because someone in the school's got COVID. So Oh geez. no. And then when I went I snuck out this afternoon for a little bike ride and when I got home the wife was home. She's been sent home from school. She's uh, one of her kids has got COVID. Oh my God. Good grief. <sighs> Almost like have, it's a global pandemic. I'm gonna have COVID <laughs> by the weekend. I can't wait. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I've been licking lampposts since they got home. <laughs> I mean, whatever keeps you occupied in Liverpool, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how's your week been, Kate? Uh, my week, it's been fine. Nothing overly exciting has happened. I currently have a week off to paint some walls and hang some shells, which is nice. Um, but yeah, other than that, nothing too dramatic. There's been some new government updates for Ireland, which, you Not know. Two changes. Yeah, and even though they made their own levels, they still managed to make a level 2.5 for Dublin. <laughs> because the other because like, they were like, oh, we'll make our own level system, but Dublin, you still don't fit into that system. You get a 2.5. <laughs> yeah, so for context, Greg, the government have come up with like a six-month plan now for COVID, and there's different like levels of severity for COVID. So there's level one, there's level two, which the country is currently at there's level three four and then up as far as level five which i assume is when shit hits fan and everyone's dying um they're at two at the minute however dublin because it's obviously more densely populated than the whole rest of the fucking country has higher cases so they wanted to put in slightly stricter restrictions for dublin but they don't want to completely shut down the capital so rather than just saying okay dublin you need to be on a three for a little while they're just like ah dublin gets a level two ish so then they were just like, 2.5, great. Okay. What was Ireland at, at the, the height of everything when shit was going down? Well, I don't know, because they've only just made this up now, because in this the midst the of COVID, we've changed governments. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had an election in January that then took ages, and then COVID hit. And we now have what is being called rotating Taoiseachs, which is great crack. So our old head of the country is now the second in command, and he's just throwing his toys out the pram all the time. It's a, it's a whole, the whole time. <sighs> Let's no, I don't know what we were at. I assume, well, see, we weren't, we weren't really, what, what the scales are now, we weren't at any of them because even level five on this scale, the schools still stay open. Like oh. the schools, the schools aren't closing in any of the levels. It's schools and crashes to stay open with restricted measures. And I'm like, ah, okay. I feel like if we get to level five, the schools probably shouldn't be open anymore. But the more important thing is that Stephen mm-hmm. Donnelly's uh, probably got COVID now. So the whole doll's been dis- um, disbanded and sent home. So there's Good. currently no government. Isn't that great? <laughs> Cracking. Our health minister is a fucking shit show. God, Bring uh, out your dead. Bring out your dead. <laughs> Honest to God. We, That's kind of what ki- it feels like. <laughs> our kids are in like, year group bubbles of like a hundred kids so one of them gets covered the whole year group bubble gets sent home how's that practical well saying that we have bubbles in our classes so for every class you get a bubble of six and those six only interact with each other in the classroom they can't interact with any of the other children but during break time they can all interact with each other in the playground so then if one kid gets covid in the class they send the whole class home anyway so it's like I, mean, well, I assume they're probably not putting in the thought as to stagger lunch breaks so nobody's out in the playground at the same time so realistically they can all interact with everybody in the school 
I think it depends how big your playground, purely because I now live around six different schools. And I think depending on the size of your playground, so there's a primary school across the road and their, play, their playground's quite small, their part, their outside. So they have staggered ones because their bell goes off every five minutes for about six, for like an hour, which is okay. obviously must be staggered break times. But then there's another school across the road that has a massive field and they just have a ton of cones separating them all. Well, you know, COVID can't get can't penetrate cones nope so. it sees the orange and it gets scared <laughs> well i mean either that or the school's on fire with all the bells Make oh, yeah. checked. We check the <laughs> fire alarm so anyone checked <laughs> but if it is it's a very pleasant fire alarm because it's like boo, 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 boo. fire we're on fire <laughs> yes, that's exactly i've got to I stop making, that goes. <laughs> i've literally got to stop making songs up <laughs> I'm like Elton John. No, you're making up some rather hilarious and vaguely racist towards Irish people ones yesterday that you were singing to me. I'm vaguely li- racist. I'm, <laughs> I, may, I may have shared one of them with Kate. I'm literally like part Irish anyway because I'm from Liverpool. Um... <laughs> I've got a little bit of Scots in me, a little bit of Welsh, and a little bit of Irish. I'm everything. But no Liverpoolian. Well, we're not even British. We're Scousers. I mean, you're not wrong there. <laughs> Thank you. How's your week been, Sinead? Um, my week's been fine. I turned 29 over the weekend. Oh, yeah! Um, <laughs> I like that you were here for my birthday. <laughs> just completely yeah, finished. I was. Yeah, I just completely forgot that. Um, <laughs> we went out for dinner. It was really lovely. They put a post-it note on the table to tell us when we needed to get the fuck out of the restaurant. So that was a time um and then we came back to my house got pissed drunk and watched hamilton and had a great time yeah it was great i highly enjoyed that Ed, to be honest <laughs> how many times have you watched hamilton now i've lost count I mean, it's, it's basically the predominant thing that i've used my disney plus account for it's all right and all that it's a seven out of ten. Oh, what happened then no, no. oh sorry Ang- <laughs> definitely more than seven up. Oh, well, yeah. No, it is. I, well, my little lovely Hamilton story is our Eve, she's 16, bang into Hamilton, listening to the soundtrack, obviously, before the, the film come on the yeah. telly. She had tickets to go to London to watch it, but then the COVID struck. Oh, no. And we went to New York in February at the height of COVID kicking off. You know, it's all about to go wrong. Smart. <laughs> and we're walking through the streets of New York and we're talking about Hamilton. And there's his fucking grave. We're standing next to Hamilton's grave. Oh, He's... wow. So we were walking all around the area where he knocked around, where he did all his business. It was amazing. And because of that, I got into Hamilton. It, wow. it just blew me away. Blow us all the way. I'm, I'm more of a soundtrack person than a sit down and watch the film person because it goes on a bit, I'll be honest with you. That's fair. It is. It is, it is a real time commitment. Like, mm. I always forget just how long Hamilton is until I watched it one Friday and I was just like, I got as far as the intermission and I was like, I need to go to bed. And then I finished it the next day. But like, I didn't quite realise that we would then be sitting in my house for nearly three hours drinking and watching Hamilton. So it wasn't until we were like, right, we should probably go to bed that I was like, oh, I'm real drunk. Yeah, I was like, guys, I really have to go to sleep. And you were like, wow, what time is it? I was like, 2 a.m. And you were like, oh, shit. <laughs> 2am what's that look like yeah. Oh, yeah. 29 again <laughs> you only ever see it from the other side i'm getting up for work um, on friday at 1 50 in the morning fucking oh, hell what's no, that about you. you'll just be coming in you'll be like yeah. that, whistling <laughs> hamilton <laughs> we'll be having a bop to the skylar sisters it'll be grand um but yeah, we watched, so I, I didn't mention it on last week's one, so I've decided that I'm going to go through and I'm going to re-watch all of the animated classics in order, because I've never done that, and there's loads of them that I've actually never seen. So I watched Snow White two weeks ago, and uh, forgot just how annoying Snow White is as a character, because oh dear lord, she is irritating. Moany bitch. Honestly. Like... I just hate her so much. Fucking <laughs> hell. You can't hate but, um, Snow White. She's a second. Like Nah. Oh, this stepmother. It's just, just really irritating. But I decided that this week, because 
Kate obviously you stayed in my house and Amy stayed as well that I would force the two of you to watch Pinocchio with me because that was the next one on my list mm-hmm. and do you want to tell the lovely people what you thought of Pinocchio Kate do you know what I sat down because I was like oh I hate Pinocchio but you're fucking we'll watch it because then we'll have something to talk about and <laughs> Pinocchio started and I was like this is a lovely movie I was like maybe I am wrong maybe I've never watched the entire thing or something like that and I was like actually this movie is really sweet and then all of a sudden we're getting kidnapped by a fox we're being eaten by whales and we're getting then kidnapped again by some other dude that wants to kill little boys and I'm just like no sorry this movie is 12,000 movies within another movie that just happens to be animated really well yeah we so I knew that I was not a fan of Pinocchio because that whole donkey scene just it I just can't handle it but Amy had never seen Pinocchio so Amy again was kind of lulled into this false sense of security as the start when it's Geppetto and it's Figaro and the blue fairy shows up and it's all lovely and then Honest John and Gideon show up and all it just all hell breaks loose and she was just kind of sitting there getting more and more confused as to what the fuck was happening she was like why are they in a whale why 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 is there a whale where did this come from so yeah it is quite a disturbing movie it is it just takes such a bleak turn it's weird though it's lovely and then just but i think the next few movies are going to be a bit because fantasia is next which i actually don't think i've ever sat through all of fantasia but then it's like bambi and dumbo which are two movies i fucking know i hate so i'm like oh I've never seen Bambi and I've sort of seen Dumbo I think I watched Mulan last night and then Mulan 2 that is a shit show Mulan 2 (laughs) oh (laughs) that is dog shit I can't wait for the the live action remake of Mulan 2 Mm, Jesus (laughs) Electric Boogaloo Um, I don't think I've ever seen Mulan 2 don't I've not seen most of the like shitty sequels, although I've seen all of the four fucking Cinderella movies and they are an absolute time. Well, it's all about arranged marriage in Mulan 2. Oh, lovely. Jesus. <laughs> Just what you want. <laughs> yep. Lovely. Have you watched the live action Mulan yet? I'm waking up to it because Nicholas is making me watch it. I'm really not interested in it. Who's he Nicholas? loved it though. Yeah, he really liked it. He really liked it. Yeah. Nicholas doesn't have his own opinions. He only has opinions that he reads on Google. That was a Ooh, controversial shit. statement. <laughs> We've personally been told that this is the only podcast he listens to on the network, so you want to be careful. <laughs> Up yours, Nicholas. <laughs> he changes his name more than I change my undies. That's all I'm saying. In fairness, he changes his name online very often. <laughs> <laughs> he has to burn them bridges and get out of town. <laughs> it's a, it's it's quite comical. You never know what name you're going to get week to week. But um, yeah, I I'm just I'm not willing to pay the twenty one ninety nine for it. So I might watch it when it gets released onto regular Disney Plus. I haven't quite decided yet. I probably will. Yeah, I mean the the live actions don't really offend me. People lose their heads over them. Um, just films people move on just watch it keep your opinion to yourself walk away from twitter and just get on with your life they're just they've they've all been all right do you know what i mean yeah what i was saying is though i I know craig we have very different opinions on maleficent because you actually like maleficent don't you Uh, well yeah it's just a film (laughs) but maleficent 2 is better than maleficent 1 I can't comment on it because I've not seen it, but Kate looked very disturbed. Maleficent 2 isn't even a movie. It's just like a conglomeration of time. Like, I, I don't even think it should be given the title movie. Well, that's, that's Mulan 2. <laughs> I, I didn't say, Alexa, where are you? So... <laughs> oh, dear. It's all, it's all kicking off. So apart from Mulan 2, how are you, Greg? How's your week? <laughs> All right, COVID and all that, licking lampposts. Oh, yes. <laughs> I keep seeing my nan and granddad. They've been dead 30 years, so they keep coming down telling me it's not my time. <laughs> oh, that's they, good. At least they're not they trying to bring back. you. Yeah. No. Yeah, so. 
can't ask for much more. No. Um, something we completely forgot to mention last week is the network's doing another quiz. Do you want to have a little plug for it? Even though we've already told most people to join anyways, but still. Oh, yeah. Um, is it? <laughs> I, part of me there was like, I wonder if Craig knows the information. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, it's something something happening next week or something or the week after. Yeah, right. Hold on, I'll I'll, I'll pull it up on um, Facebook. So it's on the Saturday, the twenty sixth of September. It starts at nine. Soon it goes on to midnight. That's late. I'm forty six. Mm. <laughs> well, just gonna have to just gonna have to deal with it. Gonna have to get on to old Nicholas about that one. <laughs> Nicholas Flamel. What's he? <laughs> What's that name from? It's from Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So, yeah, if you want to join the quiz, it'll be a bit crack. Me and Kate will be on again. Maybe me and Kate will win again. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, excuse me. If we <laughs> do the Bee Gees. Hmm? Bee Gees? We win again. Have oh. we never heard the song? No, Craig, you're 46. Oh, for <laughs> God's sake. I had it on 12-inch freaking <laughs> vinyl. Oh. Twelve inches. Is that the big one or the small one? That's the big one, game. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Seven inches, the other one. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, yeah. If you want to join the quiz, uh, you have to join the After Dark Facebook group to be able to join the quiz. So I will leave the link to that in the Facebook group. Got a really hilarious message from Pete Dobbs the other day, being like, "There's a surprising number of Irish women now joining the Facebook group." I suppose that's to do with you, Sinead. And I was like, "Yes, yes, it is." <laughs> Infiltrated. <laughs> You're taking over. It's because we've not done a quiz in a while, so I think they're all missing the, the quiz vibes. Yeah. But we'll do one eventually. So yeah, I think that's probably everything. So yeah. shall we get on with this news? Yes, news. So starting, I suppose we better talk about the operating areas have changed from October 4th for Disneyland Paris. They mm-hmm changed not so recently and never changing again no not so recently not so long ago they changed pretty recently yeah. and never changing again so from the 4th of october walt disney studios is going to be operating from 11 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon or then during the school holidays in france from 9 30 to 6. disneyland park will be operating 9 30 to 6 weekdays 9 30 to 7 sundays and 9 30 to 8 p.m on saturdays and school holidays wow that was confusing then the disney village will be open at five in the afternoon holy moly so the shops and the restaurants within disney will be open from five in the afternoon until 10 in the evening except for in nets for weekend lunch this is awfully specific and too complicated for me now i'm not gonna lie (laughs) i assume starbucks will still be open right okay so it says disney village shops so Oh, I don't know. Disney restaurants. Yeah, but it's not. Oh, Star oh, it's not, isn't directly. Oh, yeah, owned, true. So maybe. Actually, I read that it's but Disney like, restaurants like inside the park, but that obviously doesn't make any sense. So it must be the ones outside in the village. Yeah. So Studios is open for five hours. Well, Why would you bother? It doesn't really need to be open for any longer, does it? Oh yeah, fair. But just it seems awfully the, short. Like is the petrol station still open? Because that's where I did all my eating last time I went. <laughs> you're you're better off. In fairness, uh, there's actually nothing about the petrol station. To be mm. honest, now, Craig. So you might have to tweet at them and ask them specifically. I will. <laughs> Excuse when's me. Time, <laughs> when's the last time you were in? Um, two years. I've been twice. I want to say maybe three years ago, I got food poisoning. Oh, same, yeah. We we ate in that all you can eat buffy in the uh, just off Main Street. Plaza Gardens. Yeah, and he said it wasn't them, but it was. And we we stayed in the Cowboy Hotel. Shane, Shane. Good job, used to it, here, yeah. <laughs> and there was. There was a piece of manky tomato on the bottom step when you walked in. Of the hotel? At the hotel, yeah, in, in, on the way up to our room. And we seen, we did a test, a magic test, to see how long it was there for. And it was there when we checked in, and it was there when we checked out. Oh, that's oh, disgusting. Oh, 
Manky, dirty bastards. There is something about Chen, though. I just don't know what it is. It just, uh... Do you remember our room really strongly smelled like Brasso? Yeah, it just, and the whole building just stank. It did yeah, not it smell strong. good in the, in the slightest. Sorry, oh, these were the refurbed rooms. Oh, yeah, they were like the newer ones. Yeah. I dread to think what the non refurbed rooms smelled like. Yeah. Definitely like dead old people. Anyway, just a last little thing for that. There is still extra magic time for Disneyland Park, but there is no more extra magic time in the mo- in the morning for Walt Disney Studios. You can only go in when it opens. In fairness, yeah. we would rarely go into studios before 11 anyways. Yeah, except for that one time we went in to do Crush. And then got stuck there. Um, oh, what a time. <laughs> but yeah, I got food poisoning at DLP as well the first time I went, which whatever about a like a meat eater getting food poisoning that happens quite a lot if the meat's a little bit off but get a vegetarian getting food poisoning is actually quite difficult but lo and behold i managed to get food poisoning from plan hollywood and it was just the best such such fun time the first time we went we stayed in cheyenne and we were all very judgmental for breakfast while everybody was making sandwiches and putting them in their tupperwares and filling their thermos (laughs) <laughs> and filling their thermos flasks up with hot chocolate, we were like, that is outrageous. You wouldn't see that in Walt Disney World. And then we got in the park and we paid about $70 for a Casey's hot dog and it was shit. So the yeah. next day, we all had cheese and ham sandwiches. <laughs> and we were just buying fries. Yeah, bring the little rolls. Yeah, them boss little rolls. See, I always don't feel so bad when it's like when we do um when we do like club level when we stay in Sequoia Lodge because I feel like ah you know it's included I should at least get a couple of rolls but like ever since they stopped having breakfast included with a regular stay we've never paid for on site uh, breakfast because fuck yeah. that and they said that they were like gonna like come down on people like make a little rolls and all that sort of shit and I'm like oh just let the people be like. Yeah, Kate always has a little Ziploc bag with some rolls or some croissants or yeah like I'm not talking about me coming over and dumping the whole basket in my bag I'm talking like one or two yeah (laughs) well we bought shares remember when you could be like was it 20 shares or 100 shares and you could get a pass you could get like a share pass Uh, I'm sure you're right in what you're saying but we definitely wouldn't have been in that mindset so I actually have no no idea so I believe you we yeah. did it, and you could go into the park in a secret way in. Ooh. Oh, is that that door next to guest services? Is that what that is? Yes, and it's a boss little lounge, right? So we boss went in there. Boss <laughs> Went in there with the pram, and um, there was all pastries and drinks and a fire and Walt's head on a plinth above the fire, and you could sit there and... So what we did, what Scousers do, is we filled underneath the pram with about 20 pastries and, and a load Love of it. drinks. We just robbed everything. And then the, the waiter come and told us off and wouldn't take it back because we might have done something. Yeah, like once you've, once you've touched it, like what are they going to do? Take it off you and put it in the bin? Like... I know chocolate and everything we had, so it was boss. <laughs> We were just eating, but like, we were just taking one bite out of them and throwing them on the floor like that. DLP, DLP cast members will give out to your friend. Do you remember that time that we brought our early sandwiches into the club lounge thing in Square Lodge and that guy like screamed at us? Because I still think we, we were. were I still think we were. We would have been okay because when me and Ed went, we like went behind the bar, well, not the bar. We went behind the little like thing because there was no one there to serve drinks, and he was like, "Oh." you want drinks? I was like, yeah, sorry, there was no one here in the last time you could just serve yourself. He's like, oh, I don't know. He's like, next time, just tell me what you want and I'll get it. Just like, he, he dealt with it. So, like, we'd clearly, we were clearly in the wrong. But, like, <laughs> he dealt with it in such, like, a Disney way. And I was like, oh, I'm really sorry. He was like, no, oh, you weren't to know. And I was like, oh, thanks. Appreciated it. <laughs> Better than getting fucking scolded like the last time. But I, I was going to cry. It was really sad. Anywho. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 
they've released availability. So at the minute, if you have an annual pass with Disneyland Paris, you have to book the days that you want to go into the park. And if you don't cancel them before 10 a.m. on that day, your pass is then blacked out for two weeks. So that's how they're kind of managing that. So they've opened up the availability for AP reservations right to the end of 2020. And if you want your privilege tickets, so privilege tickets are if you have, I think it's only with an infinity pass. You might get it with Magic Plus, but I could be wrong. But I, I can only talk for an Infinity Pass. You can get up to five tickets a week for €39 Euro, rather than the standard daily price. And you can pre-book them and you can book them right until the end of October at the minute. So if anybody is going, one, good luck. But also you can you can book your additional tickets if you so please. Hey! I feel like anyone that's listened to this podcast should not be going to Disneyland Paris. I mean, we don't have a lot of French listeners, no. so yes, like, I agree. Anyone else shouldn't be going. Nah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Mm. Poor Pete. He books a, a, a trip to Paris, and then something happens. The world ends. He's booked about 48 <laughs> trips to Paris since August. Oh. <laughs> Keeps getting further and further out. I think he's now into 2025 now. Yeah, you were saying he's rebooked for December. I was like, that's, uh, that's ambitious. It's dicey. Whatever he does, right, mm. you do the opposite and you'll be all right. He's a Jonah. Oh, dear. Oh, Lord. And speaking of P-Dabs trying to go in December, they've uh, released their DLP nice Christmas 2020 details. I thank you. It was set up very nicely for me. So there's going to be Disney friends in their Christmas best at Meet Nikki. There will be festive selfie spots with Donald, Daisy, Minnie, Goofy, and Stitch. Santa and his wintry wonderland of Videopolis. Interesting. Quite, I think that could work quite well. And Christmas decor with the tree, garlands, and more. Starts from November 7th till January 10th. <laughs> it'll, it'll be interesting. Because like at the minute, so at the minute, basically the whole park is decked out for Halloween now. The garlands have started going up across Main Street. So I think at least having that kind of like festive atmosphere will kind of add things. But I assume they'll probably do what they've done where like random characters, they'll just kind of go up and down the parade route. Although I saw in, was it? It would have been Disney World because Disneyland's not open. But they had kind of like the additional dancers that go along with the Boot to You parade, like going down the parade route. So there was like Taffeta Mutton Fudge, there was a grave digger. There was one of the yeehaw people and like so on and so forth. So each section of the parade, there was a dancer to correspond with that. And I was like, interesting. Yeah. I also find it interesting that they've released details for Christmas without getting through Halloween. Like they don't yeah. know how Halloween's going to go with this whole like, oh, we've added extra stuff to technically encourage people to come to the park. And they're like, hey, this is what we're doing for Christmas. And I'm like, oh, maybe slow down. <laughs> Have they learned back. nothing? <laughs> Have they learned nothing from the Jungle Book Drive? Yeah, like maybe just take a step back, evaluate your situations, and then come back at us closer to November and tell us what Christmas is going to be like. Yeah, but that's... DLP don't do that, Kate. <laughs> I know. I'm DLP sorry. are just like, just fucking stick it out there. And then if people... if. if if we have to cancel shit, then that's fine. It's people's own fault for deciding to book. They don't give a shit. I just think it's quite boldly. They could give less of a shit. That's this DLP. Um, but moving on from Christmas, let's talk about some Halloween. So more Halloween merchandise is slowly making its way into the park. So they still have that ridiculous Ursula mug that I extensively spoke through before because it's just ridiculous and um, they have a live action maleficent t-shirt that says curses never end they break which makes absolutely what? no so i'll show it what? To you. <laughs> curses never end they break oh god it's shit yeah it's really shit. Shit. yep they have that cauldron mug as we mentioned previously with the evil queen on it they have the poison apple tea light holder and then they have these, what are being called as a Halloween headband. However, it's multicolored sparkles in a bow. I actually can't see if it has ears or not. Now that I look at it, I actually think there are ears. But just the bow is utterly massive. And I think the bow is supposed to be shaped like bat wings. But it doesn't quite 
work and it's not Halloweeny in the slightest because it's just multicolored glitter. Oh, it does have ears, doesn't it? They're like fluffy ears. For for context, Craig, I'll show you what they look like. Oh, they're shit. Yeah, they are right. shit. They're left over. Like from it's bad when I don't shit. even like them. Twenty three euro they want for those. Twenty three euro. Yeah. I bought a Yoda cupcake for about seven euro, and I wanted Yoda to come and hand it to me personally, <laughs> and then do a little tap dance. Because it was a shit cupcake that you get out of Asda. Oh. Out of a pack. It was that yeah. big. Did it have oh. Nutella? No, it was green. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm shocked. And it I was chilled. Nutella. Everything's in the fucking fridge in Disneyland Paris. Oh, don't ask me about that. There was very recently... Who was it? Was it on... Uh, what was it on? And they were, Nick was talking about... I listened, I, I find on myself DLP? listening. Yeah, I think it was Discovered DLP, DLP and he was talking about how he got the tombstones at Halloween and he couldn't eat them for hours. And I was like, so true. I am not surprised. I'm so surprised I did not chip a tooth trying to eat those goddamn things at like midnight. <laughs> Do you do not remember when we were there in the daytime and like bless Nathan and Kiva they were so excited and we went and we got them and then I took a bite out of one and because the fucking little tombstone slab of chocolate was so bloody rock solid the whole thing snapped off fell on the ground I didn't get to have yeah. it I was just left with that vaguely coconutty cake they're so cold like I don't know like it's really annoying how they keep everything in those fridges that they've seen it like if they can manage to not have to have everything like obnoxiously refrigerated in Florida why the hell does DLP need us? Yeah, when it's like two degrees Please. outside anyway. I had long johns on. <laughs> now they were handing you a frozen Yoda cupcake that you paid nine euro for. Mm, shit it is. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, oh, I had a segue there, but I, I hope won't use it. It's probably inappropriate. Um, one of the final things for DLP is that there's several toilets that are being closed all over Disneyland. Uh, Paris, Subway. yeah, like this around the world, <laughs> like in Discovery like, Arcade. Oh, go on. It's just going to be like China. It's just going to be French people shitting in bushes. <laughs> uh, well, they won't be in Discovery Arcade, Liberty Arcade, and Studio Services, among others. Uh, it appears to be a mainly economic measure. So basically, they just don't want to hire more cleaning staff because their cleaning staff are already doing extra cleaning procedures around the park. So they've just decided to close toilets instead. Like, now I won't lie, I'll hold my hands up. I completely stole this bit of news from P Dabs. He sent it into the group chat earlier and I was just like, grand, we're recording later. I have no news. <laughs> um, but it's just like, it's the most Disneyland Paris thing. It's like, oh, we don't want to pay any more for this. So we'll just take, we'll just take it away. But like, I just, surely there's a health and safety issue about not having Enough. sufficient bathrooms around, right? Sure, like, surely there has to be a health and safety concern around well, that no then, then if they've got less toilets then surely there's more bums on them toilets there's a higher transmission this is very true do you know what i mean i mean some of my favorite poos have been around walt disney world <laughs> i was i was wondering how long it would take for us to get on to and i feel like we've referenced it on many episodes now the fact that you had a, a lovely series on was it on twitter where you were shitting around the world yeah pooping and around ranking the, world, the yeah. toilet Toilets in Disney World? Well, you haven't lived unless you've dropped one in Cinderella's Royal Castle, not table. That's inappropriate. Castle. Was that was that your was that the, the peak toilet? Well it was the little fella standing next to me who uh, was wiping me arse. That that's how it did it really. Two dollars. I mean, that's that's big I guess I say. Sorry, there's some things that as soon as Craig starts talking, I just start ignoring. <laughs> <laughs> she went to a happy place then she literally went to a happy place i was like oh, oh we're done okay i'm back <laughs> um yeah so that's everything for dlp news this week i believe as far as i'm aware yeah yeah sure fuck it disney <laughs> plus news so today disney plus has finally launched we have Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Luxembourg, Norway, Portugal, and Sweden. Imagine not getting Disney Plus until now, during oh, COVID. Honestly. That would be so sad. Yeah, but imagine getting it now. All that boss content. That's <laughs> all saved up. True, true, true. 
True. I wonder, like, is it, I wonder if it's launching there with, like, Hamilton, Frozen 2, all that kind of stuff, or I wonder if they're having to wait again. Oh, that's a good question. I know that's definitely launching with Mandalorian because it was in the trade, because I watched, because someone put it up from, we follow someone on Instagram that's from Portugal, and they put up the Disney Plus Portugal page one, and the Mandalorian was, like, in, like, the booster ad. So okay. Mandalorian's definitely on it. But yeah, that's a good question about the other ones. I'm not really sure. Ah, and if they have and if they have Mandalorian, and we'll get on to the next thing about the Mandalorian now in a sec, like, are they gonna have season two in a month? Yeah, that's a good question. Because like we're getting season two the same time that America's getting season two now, even though America had Mandalorian way before we had it. Yeah. But yeah, that's a good question. Who knows? Who knows? Speaking of Mandalorian season two. What a segue, lining them all up today. Uh, (laughs) The trailer for Mandalorian season two was literally dropped no more than two hours ago from recording this podcast. So it's breaking news right now. But by the time you listen to it, this won't have been breaking news anymore. (laughs) What did you think of it? I am excited. I did notice that every second scene had Baby Yoda in it. And yes. they were definitely like, Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I'm not against that. Like, I do really like Baby Yoda. And Baby Yoda made a lot of the scenes in the first series of Mandalorian. So, yeah, I'm excited for it. I do miss it. Like, I do did really love that series. And I loved every episode individually as well as the entire season together. So I am excited for more Mandalorian content. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely, beautiful. You noticed one thing you noticed that I didn't was where the hell was Sasha Banks? So, Sasha Banks is the hooded character that's like in the background when they're talking about uh, Baby Yoda being handed over to the Jedi's. So, Ed was like, Is that to be honest? Let's give credit where credit is due. I did not notice that it was Sasha Banks, Ed did. We got to the end of the trailer, and he was like, That was Sasha Banks. I was like, Sasha Banks was where? And he was like, in in the trailer i was like what and so we went back and then literally when you go into google now you type in sasha banks and the next word that comes up is mandalorian (laughs) so yeah so it's it's definitely sasha banks because disney released an official photo and credited her and then she also put it out on her twitter the season two trailer with the just with the sentence this um this is the way and i was like oh shit (laughs) So who is she? Who's Sasha Banks? <laughs> Sasha Banks oh. is a WWE wrestler. Yeah. Uh, and who's she playing? She, by the looks of it, one of the Jedi that they need to hand the child to, but oh, it's right. not. Okay. That's like what's hinted from the trailer, but like we don't actually know who she is. So she's not. Um, who's the one out of Clone Wars that everyone goes on about? Who's boss? Sabine. Oh yeah, there is rumors. There, see, there is like one of one of the articles I did read was also that is she playing Sabine Wren? But oh, the, who's the other one? Oh, um, Tingy's mate. Darth oh yeah, Vader's him. Mate. Oh yeah. What? <laughs> Anakin Skywalker's mate. Is 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 um is Padawan? What's her name? So Katana. Woo! Oh. <laughs> is she is she a So Katana? No, I don't think she is. <laughs> Because she's in Mandalorian season two. Oh, I don't know. The, the, the biggest one at the moment is if she's Sabine Wren. But we'll, we'll see. Well, I, October 30th. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Absolutely. Do we know, are they releasing it weekly or are they just dropping it all? Ah, uh, no, I'd say they're releasing it weekly. Okay. I'm gonna do everyone's head in, aren't they? Yeah, they don't have that much content like good content yeah. to be releasing at the moment anyway so i assume they'll do it weekly to like make sure people keep on coming for it because i imagine that a lot of people who want to watch the mandalorian and are willing to pay for disney plus if they were just released all at the same time they might just drop their subscription for another few months again and just wait till something True. else comes so they really have to like i'd say really string them along yeah because even if they i assume they'll probably be in and around six episodes again so that's at least two months yeah. Of Disney Plus that people have to have. So that I mean, makes sense. Unless you're a sucker like me and bought the entire year in one go. <laughs> it was better. Like, I knew I was going to always use it. It yeah. wasn't a bad decision. But anyway, yeah. So that's that. 
exactly uh, I think it looks really fun I'm excited for it um, I feel like I'm going to go back and re-watch The Mandalorian because I was may have watched it before I got Disney Plus and I don't think I've really oh! watched it since I got Disney Plus you have? They, what? <laughs> piracy twins <laughs> Doing it the dodgy way. Um, yeah, so I feel like I need to go like rewatch it because I feel like the site that I was watching now, there was like French subtitles or something, fucking bananas on it. So I'll rewatch it before it gets released. If I watch one episode a week now, then I'll be like caught up by the time. There we go. I've set myself a task again. Well, maybe we could do a Mandalorian recap. We could both watch each episode every week and we'll just like recap the episode as we go. There we go. Because we started then- doing that with the Imagineering story and then we just stopped. Yeah, and then it's just fun. But now we can, because we actually will do it this time. <laughs> there we go. There's another thing for us to talk about each week. Great. And then if you guys, oh, yeah, right. So here we go. A bit of interaction with the listeners. This next week, we'll talk about episode one. So if between now and then, you guys want to watch episode one. And if you guys want to tell us your opinions on episode one, we'll talk about those on the podcast too. I watched it last there we week. Go. It's boss. There, well, you there you go. This is our first one. What There's more could you need? <laughs> <laughs> what more could you need? So, Craig, you've come on very appropriately dressed to the podcast. You're wearing a Mandalorian t-shirt with a child on it. So what did you think of the trailer? Loved it. Loved every second of it. I just wanted to see more. More, 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 more. Yeah. He's blatantly a puppet, though. He's going to start pissing me off. What do you mean blatantly a puppet? Obviously, what do you, I don't understand that comment. Because they're all pretending he's not a puppy, and we can all see he's a puppy. Have you ever watched the Muppets? Yeah, but you know they're pu- they're not set- they're puppets. They- <laughs> no, sorry, you've lost me. <laughs> he's he's at this point. It's clearly a puppy. Uh, okay, but like so are everything. Zoom, else from the Jim Henson on, company. <laughs> on the trailer, they zoom in too much when he hides his little hand. Oh, comes the out, little, his little hand. His little that's Jeremy Beard land comes out, and I was like, oh my God, that's a puppy. Right, okay, I get you. I understand what you mean. I, I, I understand what you mean now, okay. And it would be dead annoying hanging around with that all day, wouldn't it? This, just this little silent green thing, just going, meh, meh. Just eating frogs and that. Just do your head in. I don't think it's living his best life. I think I'd love that. <laughs> he's just he's just living his best life. Drinking his I mean, tea. he's fifty. Does he need his nappy changing? Well, in ratio to how long he's gonna live, and to ratio to how long we're gonna live, yes, probably. <laughs> but anyways, moving on from the Mandalorian and the final kind of news thing we'll talk about. So we've mentioned, I feel like for about seven years now, about the. Hocus Pocus Spirit jersey and the fact that I was desperate for it. So I, a few weeks ago, Disney were like, oh my God, yeah, our Halloween stuff's going to drop on this day and it's going to be great. And they dropped about five things. And then last week they were like, oh my God, our Nightmare for Christmas range is going to drop on Friday. And it's going to be great. And it literally was just Nightmare for Christmas stuff, all of which is still in stock because people clearly didn't give a shit about the Nightmare for Christmas stuff. So I have been checking and if anybody is looking for new stuff on the shop disney website just go on at 8 a.m they drop stuff at 8 a.m so just if there's stuff that you're curious about or stuff that you know you're going to want just be on the site at 8 a.m so i went on managed to get the hoax poker spirit jersey for some reason they only charged me one pound shipping and i still don't really know why but i'm not going to question it so maybe got it in the size i wanted that was off because it was 50 pounds they might have had an offer because it was on 50 pounds or something maybe um, but I mercifully managed to get it, got the size I wanted. I sent the link into a group chat that we have, and then I sent a link into the After Dark group chat. By the time people clicked into it, they were all gone to the point that Sandy had to order an extra small because that was literally the only size that was left. Yeah, and I also saw Ryan's tweet where he had everything in his basket and then it all sold out before he got the checkout. And it's just so Ryan, though, isn't it? It's just so Ryan. <laughs> And he does. He still doesn't even have any pumpkin spice latte to cheer him up. Oh, that's not. <laughs> I've started a, a, a big um, protest to get the eggnog latte on early as well now. Oh, yeah, I've never had one of those. It's Christmas like in like it's Christmas Eve in about ninety nine days. Not that I'm counting. Truth, preach, preach. <laughs> I forgot you're more of a Christmas person, goddammit. But I anyway, love the Christmas. Um, 
So yeah, they released the Haunted Mansion Spirit jersey. They also released a kind of like all over print t-shirt, a hoodie. Um, Which are both still in stock. Yes. Some mystery pins. They released that mug that they keep chucking out now for the past few years. That like a yeah. really Cindy Cauldron mug of spoon. Um, and they also released the Haunted Mansion Spirit jersey. So the newer version of one, which I'm not really a big fan of. Because I is just solid purple and the bottom is the wall massive like 3d look at wallpaper it was just it was a lot um and i know p dabs was after that and again he had the size that he wanted in his basket and then by the time he'd managed to put in his address and stuff it was gone so people were pissed it's actually a farce like i don't know how many times we're gonna have to say this and i know disney aren't gonna listen because they don't give a shit but like one why is your spend why is your limit 20 per person Who needs 20 of anything? That's absolutely ridiculous. And they understand buying limits because when they do Mickey Mouse Memories and Minnie Mouse Main Attraction, it's one per customer, two per household. Why is that not the same for your other limited edition releases? And we know it's a limited edition release because Disney Store or Shop Disney UK came back to a comment on Facebook from some woman and was like, hi, whatever your name is, we will not be restocking the Haunted Mansion and uh, Pocus Pocus Spare jerseys really sorry about this and I'm like what do you mean you're not restocking them you literally had one launch and that's it like how many do you have a hundred of each size like it just seems fucking ridiculous yeah like I don't I don't get like nothing they release does anybody need 20 of nothing not a fucking thing they release does anybody need to buy 20 of because even when they used to do so so even when they used to release like vinyl nations and they would be in the blind boxes there would be max 10 different styles so it makes sense if you wanted to order 10 vinyl nation because you could have 10 different things i get it nothing they're releasing at the minute has 20 variables like there is no need for anybody to be ordering 20 other than just ebay dickheads that then whack up online and charge extortion amounts for it yeah, so currently the Hocus Pocus Spirit jersey is up for like be- between 90 and 160 euro on eBay, which is just disgusting. And like the other thing is, I know that the Facebook groups, although they can be annoying, they're also quite interesting. Or like reading the com- comments on this, just the Shop Disney UK Facebook, because yeah. there's so many people who had messaged Shop Disney UK on Facebook and been like, hey, are you going to tell people before the next drop when the drop is? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. We're going to announce it on our social media. You'll see it. They announced it about 20 minutes before they dropped it. And I'm like, that yeah. doesn't. So at 20 to 8 in the morning on a Monday, they were like, hey, going to drop all these spirit jerseys. And to be fair, like, not everyone's available to go online at 8 a.m. in the morning. Like, yeah especially a lot of the people who are commenting are like i'm getting my children ready for school in a pandemic and you expect me to just be able to hop onto the internet at 8 a.m in the morning to try and grab a spirit jersey like fuck that so yeah the thing the thing i don't understand is like spirit jerseys especially like yes they are the ultimate like disney basic thing hi hello i have but like 10 so like i don't care but they always sell out They always sell out. So it's kind of like, I get that Disney are massively like needing money at the minute. But if they like doubled or even tripled their orders that they put in for these kind of things, they are always going to sell. So why, rather than just letting people buy 20 of them at a time, why don't you just make double the quantity so that people can consistently buy them? Because everywhere i saw online on instagram on twitter on facebook in various different facebook groups was people being told of it for every one person that said oh i couldn't actually get the spirit jersey that i wanted how many additional sales could they have had and that's 50 quid a pop so that'll very soon add up to a significant amount of money makes no sense yeah it's just a bit ridiculous and like especially in like the european and uk market because after this happened, out of interest, I went onto the shopdisney.com website because I haven't been on in a while. They have like 50 styles of spirit jerseys to choose from in nearly every size available. And I'm like, there's two new styles that you brought out, sold out within five minutes. And you're like, oh, lol, saws, there won't be any more. Like, do you not want the money? I'm confused. <laughs> Why don't you just take the money and then make the stuff? Yeah. Make, I Make to order. Like even like they did yeah. it with the they did it with the Peter Pan Minnie Mouse main attraction lounge flag backpack where they made yeah. loads 
of these I assume loads it's sold out like that then there was so much outward online of people being like I want it I want it I want it that they were like hey we'll make more but you'll just have to pre-order it and it'll be a couple of months and everyone was like yeah sure and now those pre-orders are also sold out like just do that <laughs> take people's money and don't give them the product for six months people will still be happy with that yeah because and that actually reminds me so in a Disneyland Paris Facebook group somebody had posted about the fact that those spirit jerseys were going up and everybody was annoyed because they couldn't get them and stuff like that. And one woman said, oh, I pre-ordered mine through a different site. However, um, my order's now been cancelled. And I'm kind of like, so other people are taking pre-orders for people and then going on and trying and buying them, which I assume is the equivalent of that double box toys site, which I still have no idea where my Disneyland Halloween spirit jersey is. I have absolutely no updates on that. And it's been a month and five days. Well, so clearly other that. people are managing to do it but Disney just aren't taking the initiative I don't know yeah because the thing is with those ones I assume those, sort, those sites that are taking pre-orders have bots and the bots are the one buying the spirit jerseys so they can like almost mm-hmm. guarantee that they'll have them for the pre-orders but like yeah it's just a bit of a ridiculousness at this stage like Disney have the <laughs> they have the technology to be able to see what has been bought by bots because they buy them in massive quantities extremely quickly so like and they but they just don't care but like again even if they weren't gonna monitor the bots so even if they were still quite happy for people to buy 20 of them at a time because then they're getting 20 sales at a time i get that why would they not just bulk order or bulk make them so that they can just sell more of them in general just it makes no sense you know what i guess we'll never know I know. Are you a Spirit Jersey <laughs> fan, Craig? Do you have any? No, but I've only that... just discovered what they are. Really? Like right now? Yeah, I don't buy Disney merchandise, I'll be honest with you. You're literally wearing a Mandalorian t-shirt. Yeah, but that's from Primark and it was like three <laughs> quid. I'm not being funny, love. Fair. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> I suppose, I mean, you spend like... Twenty million pounds to get over to Disney, so you're not going to then go spend another hundred pounds on a spirit jersey. It's it's amazing just how little um, money we do spend on merchandise. To be honest, mm. it's it because you you get caught up in a moment, don't you? When you get off a ride or you walk around the shops, and nor do I. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, for the kids, they can we say to them, if you want it, buy it because it might be sold out when you, you go back. But we'll put it back, and if we really, really want it, we'll go back and get it. But like our whole Christmas tree is Disney, and it's all stuff we've bought from the parks. So that type mm-hmm. of stuff. And we've got a um, haunted mansion tea coasters in, in this room somewhere. You know, the, the proper that type of stuff. Yeah. But I sweat a lot, so my t-shirts get crusty. That's what I mean. <laughs> He's all just missed Kate gagging on what looks like blue milk. <laughs> that was that was vile. The story, um, not, my, although, not my drink. Although, in fairness, when we had Nick on and we were asking him about spirit jerseys, he was like, "Oh no, I don't have them because I get too warm." But now he's got a spirit jersey, and he's even bloody loves it. They're not as cozy as I think people think they are. They're yeah. definitely oh. more just like slightly heavier t-shirt material. I'm not opposed to them. I just haven't got round to looking at them. And it's so hard to get over here. If I was in yeah. America and they were freely available like they would be in Walt Disney World, then yeah. But yeah. while you've got two to pick from and you can't go to a Disney store and when, you know, they don't sell them in there. And the ones available are shite. Mm, true that. Shot Currently, it. the only two spirit jerseys you can get on Chop Disney UK are... The Disneyland Paris Belle of the Ball and the Disneyland Paris Coral Spirit Jersey. So so got both of them. The two really shit ones. <laughs> what was the second one? Sorry, it cut out for me. Oh, the Coral one. You know, the aerial oh, yeah. inspired one. True. Although, actually, you sent me, and I completely forgot to add it to news, you sent some new Spirit Jerseys that are coming out that were kind of fun. Me? Yeah. Oh, yes, me. They're coming out. Um... <laughs> I just completely forgot that I I went on a massive oh there was a bunch of merch that was released on shopdisney.com so there's a new Mickey Mouse steamboat uh there's a new Mickey Mouse steamboat Willie Grayscale Spirit Jersey which is 74.99 
there's a woody spirit jersey which is looks completely different to the one that we got over here and it's yeah. 65 64.99 and then there's a buzz lightyear spirit jersey which also looks different to the one we had over here and that one's also 64.99 um so the toy story ones are released is- for the 20 no 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 hold on why is that steamboat willy one nearly a ten or more expensive oh yeah i don't know because it's black that's bizarre yeah so the toy story ones are released for the 25th anniversary of toy story and the steamboat really one is because they released a whole like mickey mouse range and there's a bunch of cute little cardigans and a varsity jacket and there's the cutest little pluto cardigan which i love and they've also released this new key set which i think is like 60 dollars, and you can buy four keys together so there's a Walt Disney animation key, a Pixar animation key, a Marvel key, and a Lucasfilm key. I think it's sixty dollars, and you get all four in a little box. Nice. And yeah. we know how much people love their keys. I don't get it, but anyway. <laughs> From looking at the picture that you sent, I think the Steamboat Willie one is fluffy. Oh, oh, on the bottom. Oh, I think the bottom right. of it is fluffy. I'm, I'm, I'm having a look. Yeah, oh, yeah it's, it's like fancy material. Hence why it's ten year, ten dollars more expensive product details da, 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 da. although it doesn't specifically say anywhere that's fluffy but it definitely looks fluffy i don't think yeah. i want it if it's fluffy it's definitely like fleecy material down the bottom yeah you can just about see that yeah how are you going to iron that that'll be a nightmare oh you know iron iron's a spirit jersey <laughs> i iron me socks ah craig you have too much fucking time on your hands <laughs> stop uh, so yeah, that was all the that was all the new merch released on shopdisney.com. That's what got me onto looking at all the spirit jerseys in America. And then I started picking out spirit jerseys, and I was like, oh, I could treat myself to like a spirit jersey and like a t-shirt because it's free shipping to America for over seventy five dollars. So I was like, oh, I could use my address pal and get it sent over here. But the last time I did that with something for America, I got hit with like twenty five euro um, tax fees. So I won't. I'll leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 not worth it and actually that reminds me so um a guy that i chat to you he's part of his twitter online that guy ollie that's hopefully getting us pins when he goes to dlp if he can go to dlp um he one of his sisters lives in america and he got her to pick up the hocus pocus spirit jersey for him right it, she sent it like two weeks ago and it was just stuck in the warehouse somewhere they tried to charge him import taxes even though it he like it his sister had bought it and then his sister had shipped it directly as a gift as a gift to charge him 50 quid for import charges but they're ridiculous they charge you import charges and then they also charge you a handling fee and i'm like a five euro and i'm like the handling fee is your fucking job you're the post office (laughs) i was i was actually only talking about that earlier because i was having a uh, i was chatting to someone about a hot topic and i was like yeah, so on post charge you your taxes or whatever for getting stuff from America and then they charge you a 10 euro handling fee. And they were like, for what? Being a postman? And I was like, uh, seemingly, yeah. I think it's because it has to go through like an extra screen because it's got tax on it. And I'm like, fuck off. Like you're the post office. That's your job. That's what the postage is for. That's what the postage pays for. I've already paid for that. Oh, it's just, I hate living on such a small fucking island that can't get anything. Except COVID, obviously. Got loads of that. <laughs> got loads of COVID and potatoes. <laughs> it's Harry Wogan. We yeah, we had Terry Wogan, yeah, we did, yeah. Harry <laughs> Wogan. So now it's time to um grill Craig. <laughs> Craig really, really tried to get me to send him questions beforehand so that he could prep for it. Well, I just because my Was... mind goes blank because I'm getting old. It's forty six. Forty six. <laughs> The main thing people will have learned from this is that you link lampposts and you're 46. 46. Yeah. What can I say? They'll be part of the quiz. (laughs) That means someone's got to write the fucking quiz. We're fucked, are you? (laughs) (laughs) So, Craig, tell us about your history with Disney. What's your first memories? Um, My first, 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 first memory, I think was watching Snow White in the 80s when I was or maybe the 70s on the big screen. And then our first foreign holiday was 1993 to Walt Disney World. As a family, I was a 19-year-old, our first foreign holiday. Shouldn't really have been going away with my mum and dad, but I did because it was Walt Disney World. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't remember much about that holiday, I'll be fair. I'll be honest with you. It was the uniforms. 
because when I went back with Kerry in 2001 for the first time, um, all the, everything was exactly the same as I could remember. Do you know what yeah. I mean? The, the uniforms, the tractors in the car park, driving you around when you parked your car, all that type of stuff. Tractors. I'm just imagining deadly old Paddy in his tractor going, bringing you the tank's fucking Epcot. I mean, and then they're still there now, aren't they? And the, the uniforms are basically the same as they were in 1993. Yeah. Um, I and love then that Disney costume. The biggest holiday um, was 2009. That was when we got the bug. Oh. The whole family went over. We stayed in your yourluxuryvilla.com, Alan Morag. And um, it, it just it was a very relaxed holiday. You can't do that now. It was one of them. Where should we go today? Should we go to SeaWorld? Yeah, let's go to SeaWorld. Yay! You were like that, but right. it's not that now, is it? It's 60 days out and it's your ADRs and and all that palaver. They're taking a lot of the fun out of it, the spontaneity. It depends okay. what you classify as fun, Craig. <laughs> well, the, the planning of, of a holiday now is part of the fun, isn't it? I'm not mm. opposed. I love the, the 60 days and the 180 days and I love all that. Whether they're going to come back in the near future, I don't know. But Good question, good point. Because Kerry's mm-hmm. the planner. She does all the planning. Right. She has spreadsheets and everything. Hey, and at me. That's the way to go. <laughs> and then I'm the knobhead who has to phone Disney up and try and book a table for 17 at Cinderella's Royal Table. <laughs> because booking's over 10, I think, you have to phone up. So I, The joy is bringing I, the whole fam. Oh yeah, and the way this COVID's going, there won't be seventeen for long. We'll be down. We'll be down a few soon, I think. Oh Jesus Christ! I thought quick. you. I thought you meant. I thought you were going to say that like they wouldn't sit seventeen of you at a table. <laughs> Not that there wouldn't be seventeen of you there anymore. <laughs> It'll take the ashes. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. <laughs> We'll have, oh, Craig on, we'll have Craig on next month and he'll be like, yep, yeah, we're down two. <laughs> yeah, hand luggage. <laughs> oh, sick. <laughs> hey, you. So what's your favourite ride? I'm intrigued. Um, well, as you get older, you get a little bit more sensitive to everything, don't you? So you can... <laughs> You can come off stuff green, which I never used to do. Oh, okay. You know, I used to be able to just go on the roller coasters, wow, wow, around like that. I, we stayed on one at SeaWorld like four times once because of a thunderstorm. It just reopened and no one was going back on it. So they're just letting us go round again and again. I thought you meant they just left you on it during the thunderstorm. And I was like, that seems <laughs> safe. Yeah, rain like that. <laughs> no, but I, I used to love the Hulk. I used to absolutely love the Hulk. And... That knocks me green now, literally. Um, Hi, gay. Yeah. Hulk, green. <laughs> think, <laughs> the Tower of Terror, I think, at Walt Disney World, probably. Um, although the Haunted Mansion, because you're just sitting there, really. You can have a little sleep. And um, at Universal, Jimmy Fallon, all day long. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, it's just family fun. I love, I love that you can all be on there together and all interacting and all having a laugh together um, rather than sitting in twos or having to do kiddie swap and all that palaver. Do you know what I mean? Okay. No, I can't. I've never, I haven't been on Jimmy Fallon, so I can't comment on that. But, um, I like that you managed to pick out both mine and Kate's favourite Disney rides, though. So well done for that. Yeah, smooth. Nice suit on. Done me all way. <laughs> so. As much as I refused to actually prep you questions, there was a question that you specifically wanted me to ask you, which was what your favourite Disney memories are. And you told me that you had three great stories. I, so, did have, I did have three, but I can't remember the third one. So we've only got two now. Fuck's sake, Greg. I know. 46. The one thing you could prep. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. I've had a weekend. Tell me about it. Um, so 2015, it's the last full day of our holiday and we're in um, Adventureland in Magic Kingdom and we'd just been in to see Tinkerbell remember where they had Tinkerbell, you walked over the bridge and the Tinkerbell meet and greet was in there and they shrank shrank you down and all that, so we went and had um, 
oh, what's that ice cream called that everyone likes? Goes on about. Dole Whip. Dole Whip. Boom. Good job you're here, Gail. Right, so we went and had a Dole Whip. They went and did the Aladdin ride. I sat there, and then we went... No, hold on, I'm getting it mixed up. Yeah, so we went and got the autographs. Then we had a Dole Whip. Then we went on the ride. Then she said, pass me the camera, and I'll take some pictures while I'm on the ride. And I was like, I thought you had the camera. And she was like, well, no, you had the camera. It turns out neither of us had the camera and we'd lost our autograph books. Oh, no. Oh, my God. From the entire holiday. And the oh, girls, no. The girls had filled them. So, blind How old were your girls? Um, so, five years ago, Eve would have been, she's 16 now, 11, and Grace would have been six. Oh, no. Oh, no. Or 10. No, it was 10. 10 and five, they were because we went the year after with the whole family. Oh, Jesus. And we went and asked all the, you know, has anyone handed anything in? And it's, oh, it'll be at guest services at the end of the day and all this palaver. And we're mm-hmm. like, well, we're going home tomorrow. And so we just went to the girl on the exit of the Tinkerbell meet and greet. And she said, can you give us a minute? You know, can you stay here for 10 minutes? And we were like, yeah, yeah. And she went off. She spoke to her boss and she came come back with two autograph books. And we were like, well, that's brilliant. Yeah, thank you very much. But we're going home tomorrow. They're empty. So she went, give us a minute. And she went down underneath into the utility doors, basically. Oh, my God. Into the staff canteen, basically. <laughs> and got all the autographs that you could imagine for everyone oh. and then come back up and all the autographs were in the books so Kerry's crying the <laughs> girls are crying I'm tearing up and a, a boss is walking past oh, oh and the two staff are crying the manager <laughs> and the girl they're crying and this staff walks past you can tell he's staff because he's got a litter picker like that and he comes over, goes, is everything okay here, sir? Like that. And we're like, why is yeah, everyone crying? <laughs> this is, this has just happened. And, he, and we've lost our camera. We had like 800 photographs on it. And he nice. went, oh, I see you've got a um, photo pass there as well, sir. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Here, here's a voucher. Go and get some pictures printed off on us. Do you know, like that? You know, st- stuff like that is what Walt Disney World was, or Disney was always all about. Um, and then the other story was I'm in the queue to see to meet Mary Poppins in Hollywood Studios. Okay. Where the Star Wars bit is that used to be like a mismatch of meet and greets, didn't it? It would be that big teddy bear from Toy Story Three and and Mr. Strawberry. Lotto's Man. the same for anyone wearing Lotto. Lotto. Oh yeah. <laughs> the- the baddest Disney villain ever. That is the worst Disney villain. He is evil in me. Right. So we're, I'm in the queue to meet Mary Poppins. And there's a severely, severely disabled little girl in front of me with her mom and her dad in a, in a chair. She's blind. She's deaf. She is everything. She is just so disabled. She's everything. <laughs> She's honest to God. Right. And... Mary Poppins come over and like they actually had a little brief conversation with the, the mum and dad and then the two penguins turned up. They just brought these two penguins oh, in geez. and he spent they spent like ten minutes with this little girl and it was all with touch on Mary Poppins' face and on the penguins. Well, there was snot everywhere. <laughs> the whole the whole queue was just crying. Everybody was just, it was just the, one of the most beautiful things you'll ever see. And that is what the Disney magic used to be. I think a lot of it's gone. I mean, last year we had some really shit cast members um, with bad attitudes, proper bad attitudes. You all think they're in the fucking CIA now or the FBI with their glasses on and, and he, they just talk through their glasses. They don't take the glasses off. You know what I mean? And they, 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 they're just horrible. Some of them, horrible. Um, but that Mary Poppins will live with me forever. And none of my kids were involved. Oh, <laughs> so, that's so cute. No, but it was it. And uh, 
them type of stories are, are what you go to Disney for and you pay the money because you, know, you are paying a premium for all that type of stuff. But I can't yeah. remember yeah, what the right. third one was. It might have been, I don't know, poo related. I don't know. can't remember. Oh, moving on. Probably. Um, uh, yeah, no, when you talk about like paying for that premium when you go to Disney World and a Disney park and stuff, like, I think it is also like, yeah, you still expect that premium because you're paying the premium. But the problem is now that like the premium's not being passed on to the cast members in a lot of ways. And oh, that's definitely. why you that's why you do get a lot of cast members who are like, I don't give a shit because my manager shouted at me today for 10 minutes because I was late by 30 seconds and like big fucking whoop just because I didn't the swiper didn't go down quick enough. Like that's like that those little pieces of shit and they're getting docked points for like fucking nothing and all this sort of yeah, crap and I so mean, like it's so easy to be pissed off and then have that carry on to your guest service we were in hollywood studios last year the tower of terror um i took the kids in for rope drop and so we're waiting good man and, yourself and they're all there they're all there like lined up like fbi agents like the men in black in their disney uniforms with shades on and everything and the bark and instructions at, at the the customers barking literally and jack my little nephew stood on the pavement mm-hmm. and this cast member comes mar- big big fella he was fucking monster of a man comes marching over demanding that he gets off the pavement I'm like what are you doing mate he's eight yeah like even even in regular like retail like there's ways you do certain things like you don't approach things in that manner and so we were all corralled onto the road and we weren't allowed onto the pavement. There was no reason why we couldn't be on the pavement. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And on, on the same spot, there's a um, DVC stand just to, as you're walking back out. And we're all there, and it's the middle of the day, and it's busy. It's August. It's so busy. And there's a manager giving a public dressing down to the cast member because he had the wrong footwear on in public. In plain yeah. view of everybody walking mm-hmm. past, yeah. you know, and we're all in this cell phone. I've gone all American, cell phone <laughs> thing, you know. So I could have got my phone out and videoed it. It was so public, it was just yeah. wrong, yeah, just wrong, yeah. Un- unfortunately, and like even, even I suppose, taking the kind of store lens on it, looking at the Disney store Grafton Street now compared to when I joined, because when I joined, you were given a tour because it was an imagination store and there were all things that you had to get shown and you had to be shown how to do different events and shown how to do fly past the characters and all these kind of little extras that you wouldn't get in the likes of smith's or hamley's or elsewhere the things that kind of made a disney store different to any other place where you would buy kids toys or buy anything else disney and you had to on your like induction you had to be brought around and shown everything and shown all the different aspects of the trees and all this stuff they don't do any of that now. The, tw- the trees are switched off. The mirrors in the princess room are gone. They don't do events anymore. They don't do fly past anymore. Like it's all, and that was long before COVID. They just stopped all of that yeah. to save money. Mm-hmm. It's just very sad. And that's the, I mean, Disney is always about the money. You are paying a premium. Yeah. But when, when you tell a cast member, it's my last day today, we're, we're going home tomorrow, they can't get you out of there quick enough. Yeah. Yeah. They're not in because you've got no more dollar to give them. They're not interested in you. Mm. Oh, that's really sad. I hope you come back and see come come home real soon. And you're like, ah, fuck off you, no bed. Just fucking give you about twelve grand. <laughs> yeah. It's um it's definitely losing some of the some of the pixie dust that it used to have, for lack of a better phrase. But universal is going up mm. and up. And up, they're smashing it. Universal, absolutely smashing it. Yeah, I'm very excited to go back to Universal whenever I go back to Florida again because I only got to spend a day there the last time. So, well, it'll see you in 2023. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you um, go. Tell us a bit about your podcasting life, Craig. I got, when I I come uh, back from Florida in 2009, like that was my third time but it was like my first time it was like the light bulb had gone on right so so i was clinically depressed really down and it goes on itunes and i types in walt disney world 
looking for Disney Park music to put on my iPod. And all these podcasts, just like hundreds and hundreds of people talking about Disney. So one of them, you'll both know, is Disney Brit. That's like, no, never heard of it. No. Strange. Strange that because it's in the top of the charts and they haven't put an episode out for like 18 months. Fucking knobheads. <laughs> right. But, in fairness, the name is probably why I wouldn't know about them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but this, this Disney podcast, you could interact with them on Facebook and you'd reply and you could ask them questions and I'd be driving my car to work listening to the latest episode and my question would get re- like read out and they'd all talk about what I would ask, asked, and it was amazing. This this new thing, this you know, podcasts, and and then we started to get involved. You know, going backwards and forwards and talking to them, and then some of the lads, some of the other lads, did uh, your mouse cast. Did you ever hear that one? Uh, I heard of it. I think I might have listened to like one episode, but I didn't didn't hook me in. So that was like a trip a trip report one, and they they were always struggling for guests from week to week. And I think when you're doing a podcast, you get bogged down. You think you've got to do a podcast every week. Uh, Not that there's nothing wrong with that, but then you're tying yourself to a schedule. And then you get yourself, your knickers in a twist when you start to fall behind and stuff. So they never had a guest. So I said, well, I, I was new on Twitter at the time. Like, I will help in the background if you want. And I'll start getting guests in for you and that type of stuff. And that's that's where it started really you know they broke up i because of me it is after dark happened really wow that is true so (laughs) (laughs) why do i feel like we're going to get a rebuttal from nick or something (laughs) no no nick will agree 100 percent with this so on disney brit um they had adam jules and craig right and Jules left, I think, and then Craig left, and Adam wanted new people. So I suggested um, do like Pop Idol, right? So okay. Get, okay, get I'm people, with you. Get people to send in a little, little bit of a dialogue, and like the listeners can vote on who to put through. Gotcha, I understand. And it was Disney Brit Idol. It was called Disney Brit Idol, and then um, Nick didn't win. <laughs> um, We're Paul Nick's Do- getting an awful dressing down on this episode. <laughs> he loves it. Paul Dolan didn't win. Um, and Paul Boniface didn't win. And Nick and Paul Boniface did this podcast out of rage because there was allegations of um, vote rigging. It was a very passionate time back then for Disney, Clearly. Disney <laughs> podcast fandom. So out of the rage, if you go and listen to the first Disney, um, Diz After Dark, there's a load of F-bombs in it and a load of swearing just for the sake. There's two grown men talking about Disney and fuckity fuck fuck, you know, like that. And again, uh, then Dolan joined and then I reached out to them and said, look, your mouse cast has gone under. Do you want me to help with the socials? And that's how I got involved. And then since then, it's just gone fucking mental. Podcasts wow. coming out of my ears. Who knew it would have all been because of you, Craig? It was because of me. Everything. <laughs> no. It all started with a scouser. <laughs> oh, what a knobhead. So what podcasts are you on now? Oh, what, what, what am I on, Sinead? So... <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Sinead. Get the list of let's, Craig's let's podcasts. Let's see how many of these there. I can get right. So you've got Disney Parks and Beyond. Yes. That Universal podcast. Yes. The two movie ones that you do on Patreon. Yes, they're not real podcasts, though. Yeah. Chris Boys? Although I feel uh, like that's a different name. This or that. This or that. Yeah. The Christmas one. Um, it's Christmas. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's a couple others. Two Tribes, which is a Liverpool 41. That's why I don't know that one. We'll never be listening to that one, Saz. Why are you a Man U fan? <laughs> I'm a like nothing fan. It's right, girl. Football shit. It's for wimps. <laughs> um, Hell hath no fury. Like oh, hell. I forgot about that. I was listening to that the other day. Yeah. Um, everybody's got one. That's okay. a, a podcast about penises. Lovely. 
<laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, it's opinions. Everyone's got one, an opinion. Um, oh, that good. Kevin Smith view, a skew review. That's oh, yeah. about the Kevin Smith movies. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, Half a World Away. That's with Cat and Lewis from Australia. We haven't done one of them for a while. And that's that's it. Boom. How many that's a that? lot. Jesus. Oh. You... And you were suggesting a, a, a potential Star Wars one to get added to the network as well. Oh, yeah. I'm not going on that. I don't know anything about Star Wars. As he says, what, wearing it. a Mandalorian t-shirt. <laughs> All right. There's a hairy man. There's a, a little green man. That sounds a... like the network. <laughs> <laughs> 46 year old dabs live on podcast it's a pity it's not a video <laughs> thank god it's not a video Dang, love it. so i i like that we like made a point of calling out the fact that nick and ryan have about 10 million podcasts but i actually think you might you might yeah do with them oh i think i've got more what what happened was anchor of you know the the podcast provider mm-hmm. yeah they happened so we were always lips in we were always pay for hosting and all that type of stuff and then anchor come along with free so basically if you have an idea and you've got a voice and you know what a little bit about what you're talking about because i don't know i'm i'm not really into disney that much um you're there for comedic effect yeah i couldn't tell you fuck all to be honest i, I prefer universal a bit more but if you know what you're talking about a little bit you can just put a podcast out about anything. Yeah. It's amazing. And people listen. Do you know what I mean? The Christmas one. Oh, it's amazing. We, we're doing 1969. I'm going to record it tonight with Stuart. We're doing 1969 now. And it's the first Christmas number one we're not going to put on the playlist. Oh. Why? Rolf Harris, Two Little Boys. Oh, yeah. No, fair. Oh, uh, fair. Yeah. No, that's not needed, is it? Can't do it. Can't do it. So we're going to put the number two on instead. What was the number two? Spoiler. Oh, fucking hell, girl. You've caught me with me pants down. I, I hear it. You just said you made a whole point to me and I thought you wanted to say it. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I haven't looked yet. But uh, <laughs> as long as it's not Jimmy Savile singing about something. We can only hope. Yeah. We can only hope. I'm not putting the number three on. That'll be fucking terrible. What was it? Uh, 1969. Yes, well, Christmas Day. the graft for you. I have read what it is, but Sugar Sugar's number three in the charts. Sugar Sugar, do, 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 oh, honey, honey. That's only telling me number one. Oh, have a word. Don't make me have a look. Hold on, I'll get there. <laughs> Boss content, this girls. Fucking hell, I tell you. Let's At least you go. can swear on this one. Oh, uh, do you know what? I had to stop swearing. Um, the albums from 1969, the top 10 albums are absolutely amazing. What was number one? I have no idea. Abbey Road, The Beatles. Boom. You can have that. Uh, Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town. That was Kenny, number two. Yes. Kenny Rogers and the First Edition. There you go. What the fuck's that? <laughs> Who bloody knows? Who oh, yeah. bloody knows? But you can, you can find. Uh, we'll leave the link to the. Well, we'll leave the link to the ten thousand podcasts the Craig's on, but specifically yeah. the Christmas show podcast. notes is going to be about four miles long. Yeah, it was yeah. actually. I fun. always say this, and then I <laughs> and then I get to actually having to do the show notes, and I'm like, oh for fuck's sake, Shane, why'd you do this to yourself? But Craig, you're the reason we we're on the network because you were the one that reached out to see if we wanted to join. I love I love podcasts. I love listening to podcasts. Um, I, I thought you were going to say you loved our show, but you didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't be on the network if I didn't love listening to, the, to you two talking. Kate okay, just wanted the ego boost. Yeah. yeah. Every... I've listened to, I mean, I used to subscribe to like 40 Disney podcasts. What's I know. That's way too many. Well, there's about 200 of them out there, but I there's used that. more than 200. Honest to God, it's amazing. But now, Disney podcasts, I listen to yourselves, the Disney Dream Girls. I listen to us, Quality Control. Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, Ryan. Got to check Park in on Nick's editing, eh? Yeah, he doesn't do any shit. <laughs> Lazy bastard. 
Um, and then Ryan, that's all I listen to now. I think I feel like I've offended someone. But in fairness, there's not a lot of Disney podcasts that I listen to that aren't on the network. I think about the only one that I do is Once Upon a Scream, but that's more so oh, yeah. a movie one. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I think I only really listen to the Disney podcast on the network. You, you get to a level of knowledge about the parks where you basically yeah. know everything. Yeah, and then if you find something that's like where the information's kind of old or they kind of don't 100% know what they're talking about, I'm like, ah, no, I'm not listening to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but also you just end up like, you're not listening to it necessarily for content you're listening for, to it more so for the people yeah especially mm-hmm. with a lot of like newsy based podcasts do you yeah. know what i mean yeah definitely i used to love inside the magic when that was a podcast ricky cabanti but you know he didn't do any personal life he didn't do any of that he just read his news out in his style mm-hmm. and yeah that was good for what it was but then when you listen to another 10 podcasts all doing the same news yeah it just gets boring that's the thing and like there's so many sites and not even necessarily podcasting the news realistically because however long it takes you to get the news and whatnot but there's so many like news accounts like for Disneyland Paris you've got you know you've got DLP reports there's kind of no point in like trying to position yourself as being the news people because people are always going to go to them same with like the days when it comes to the US parks like there are certain people that just do it better than most so that's why it just makes more sense to just have a chat and and i, lo- I love pete Werner and i love the days and you know I've been, yeah. I've been in a taxi with pete Werner. he fucking smells amazing <laughs> i was gonna say he seems the type that would smell really really good oh, yeah and i've never seen a man smoke a cigarette like that before he is just pure class everything he does is class he's a he's a lovely fella and he is well dressed manicured to within an inch of his life. He's just amazing. And I've been in a taxi with him, me, dickhead from Liverpool. <laughs> but, but Nick was sitting on his knee. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, yeah. You a bit jealous? I'm yeah. very jealous. Very <laughs> jealous. I think that's a great place to end it off. <laughs> exactly. I can't think of it, Nils. No, neither can I. <laughs> I can't think of it, Nils. Any yeah. other plugs you want to plug, Craig? No, I'm no. all plugged out. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> Just go and listen to everybody on the After Dark Podcast Network. I listen to every single show on there. And it's just a collection of people. And we're all, we all sort of look out for each other. And it, it, it's no hidden agendas, no secrets. You know what I mean? We just, we're all just nice podcast, or trying to be nice podcast people. Me and Nick have our moments, like. No, I have to say, like, from the second we joined, like, everyone has, not that you were dickheads beforehand, but, like, especially since we've joined, like, everyone has been super lovely and everyone is really kind of, like, supportive of all the other shows on the network and stuff, which is Which very, is just what nice, it's all about, yeah. Of, it's nice and refreshing. Of, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, like, toxicness in, especially, like, the Disney sphere. There's a lot of people competing and all that kind of stuff, but everyone's everyone's very chill which is oh yeah we've we've got our we've got our enemies you know we 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 do have people who we've offended and upset and i mean you just block you everybody has that yeah fucking assholes it is what it is it is what it is on that note thanks so much for listening guys (laughs) thanks for having me (laughs) anytime greg anytime if you guys want to hit us up on Instagram, it's at Mickey Waffles Pod. If you want to hit us up on Twitter, it's at Mickey Waffle Pod. The exact same, just sans the S. But you know, Instagram's where the party is at. This is very true. And if you're listening on an Apple device, please do go give us a rating. We actually got a lovely review from Craig about a week ago, which was very nice. So thanks for that, Craig. And yeah, don't forget to check out the show notes. I'll leave the link to the After Dark. Um, Facebook group in there and you can join and join the quiz on the 26th and you can see me and Kate kick everyone's ass. I say hey. this before we get you, you will. <laughs> I'm going on Nick's team. Oh, well. We're doing it in teams. <sighs> oh, oh no, I'm going on me. What did I do last time? Muted myself Everyone was just three hours. Yeah. Fell asleep. Fell asleep. <laughs> just 
you, you did a, what we like to call a Sam. So Sam would join our quizzes and just periodically throughout the night, she would just become more and more horizontal the more and more she drank until she was literally in bed under the duvet, just still on, still on Zoom. Yeah. So you take the Sam approach to it. I'll be on the Cherry Pepsi Max. Nice. I feel like that's the official drink of the network. Yeah. It's lovely. It's lush. <laughs> And on that non-sponsored note, thanks so much for listening, guys. Thanks again to Craig for coming on. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>